Next on the list, we've got news over the weekend. Jake Paul defeated Tyron Woodley in another YouTuber versus MMA boxer fight thing that they're doing at the moment um i didn't watch the fight at live i had to kind of watch it back and in the morning i kind of quickly scanned to see who won and i was like oh again this joke poor guy managers just keep pulling out these victories every time you think he's gonna lose and he's finally gonna get his just doers and he's finally gonna fight a quote-unquote real fighter he always manages to pull it out of the bag and maybe it's time where you all kind of start putting respect on the poor brother's names and maybe quickly realize that sometimes life isn't fair and you know god blesses people with talents and genes that are able um, to kind of allow them to get into boxing what late in life and be able to kind of box with some of the greats and be able to hold their own maybe that's the case i don't know what the case is but in general a fairly impressive performance especially when you consider this was probably his hardest test in terms of he got rocked he looked like he was struggling a bit he adjusted and he ended up winning the fight i thought fairly easy i think the split decision thing at the end was pretty much insane but i thought it was a fairly easy fight um on paper especially as a USC fan, I probably should have been more aware or I should have been more... I should have kept it in mind that Woodley has looked really bad, especially towards the tail end of his career in the UFC. I think it was four defeats back to back, which is not a big deal because, you know, the UFC, the talent roster is just insane. But the manner of his defeat, especially when you consider how dominant he was prior, it just led you to believe that this is just what it is, isn't it? Like the UFC, it's just a mean sport, combat sports in general. You just wake up one day and then suddenly you look the guy that he once was and his power diminished. He's kind of looked a bit hesitant in the ring and just looked a shadow of himself. So we should have known that that guy wasn't suddenly going to turn it on because the one thing we realize about MMA or we realize about combat sports over the years is that same would happen with Conor McGregor. It's fairly difficult to go from being really good and obviously going for a shit spell and then suddenly turning it back on again. You don't just turn it on. And whether it's the fame, whether it's the wealth, whether it's just father time knocking on your door, something happens to these guys where they just don't end up, you know, they don't they don't kind of sustain that ability to fight the way they did when they were younger in you know, as they progress in years. And it's just it's just a matter of life, I guess. And obviously him fighting, you know, a kid that's like, what, is he 24 or something, right? I don't know, right? It's something like that in his age. is never going to end well. It really wasn't. And, you know, um, it feels like Jake Paul has more to lose in this arrangement than Tyron Woodley does because for all the hype and the fame this guy has, it's only there because he's winning fights. I think we've seen it with Conor McGregor. The moment you start losing fights and the moment you start turning into a bit of a hill, that banter and that kind of cocky personality doesn't hit the same. People don't really like it. So Jake Paul's only kind of sustaining this momentum and this fame because he's winning. So I'm pretty sure he's aware of this. So there's a lot of pressure on his back to ensure that goes on because if he doesn't, it's going to stop the gravy train and this kind of alternate career that he's got because I think he's spoken about it quite often about how kind of blocked and bored he felt about making youtube content he felt like he did everything and he went to explore different things and this was it right he's finally found a kind of a purpose something that gives him structure it kind of keeps his feet grounded and keeps him out of trouble so he's definitely going to be fighting two for nail to make sure that he can you know um, keep it and of course prove that that was wrong because there's one thing he likes to be is hated he likes to be a heel more so than his brother does and he kind of bask in this kind of glory of people wanting to see him get knocked out and he keeps keeps on proving everybody wrong and this is the perfect fight for him to keep on proving people wrong because if there's one person that's going to hesitate and kind of you know uh be a little bit gun shy um it's definitely tyron woodley um there was parts i think was it second round where he kind of clipped um you know jake paul and it looked like he was going to go for the finish and he just hesitated he just kind of stopped for half a second the same thing that you saw him do in ufc towards the end and he just didn't hesitate he hesitated to finish the job he hesitated to kind of unload he hesitated to really kind of wrap up the show or kind of fall in, or kind of down his sword and in the end jake paul won that fight pretty easy i thought from what i saw but i don't know maybe we have to give the jake paul guy a little bit more respect because he definitely uh, put in a decent performance especially when you see stuff like this on twitter it says here Jake Paul is taking less money in his fight against Tyron Woodley so others can make more. As a result, everyone on the card is receiving a record payday. It's hard, again, like for all the negative stuff that he might have done in his past, it's really difficult to like this, not to like this guy. Um, especially when you consider all the conversation around, you know, fighter paying the UFC, Dana White being a little bit of a tyrant and not paying people. UFC fighters crying on camera about getting bonuses. People saying that they had negative balances in their account as they're going to fight in a cage with somebody with their, in their flipping underwear. It's just insane to think that these guys are fighting for like 30 grand, right? And half of that might go to taxes and your camp and you're left with just about nothing in terms of kind of putting your life 
life on the line. So to have somebody like a Jake Paul deciding to use his fame and his platform as an opportunity to remind people about how unfairly some of these fighters are getting paid and to kind of uh, restore some parity and some balance to the fight promotion game is something admirable to see for sure. And it's a quote from him. It says, I'm not just saying it, I'm actually doing it. That's taking money out of my pocket to give to all boxers on the card and the biggest payday of their lives. It continues here. It says... Um, Jake Paul has been advocating for more money um, in combat sports in June. He donated to a GoFundMe for UFC Sarah Appler to cover a training cost for a fight. He then called out Dana White, telling the UFC president to pay our fighters more. And this is a quote from him. Dana White's never going to do that because, you know, it, it doesn't... For as much as I hate the guy and I think he's holding the sport back and I think the sooner Dana White leaves the UFC and replaces it with a president who's able to kind of, you know, be a little bit more fair and kind of... He, I don't know whatever happens Union Dana White leaves the UFC will definitely be in a far better place as a business when this guy goes for sure especially how he kind of talks to fighters and the grudges that he holds it's just not conducive to building a professional uh, combat you know organization in the long run I just don't think it lasts forever especially you know when they get paid flipping pittance but at the moment he's got no owners to do it because there's no incentive right why would he pay people who aren't necessarily as famous as others more money even just because they're on the card because he knows you can get away with paying them less and then UFC pockets more of it and able to invest it into marketing so so but this is a quote or a screenshot from uh, Jake Paul that he's calling out Dana White he says Dana White you may have bullied your way into the controlling fans of fighters careers but I have never said I want to sign for the UFC nor will I ever maybe I would consider letting you co-promote one of my events against UFC champion like he did Connor when he fought Floyd which is something that people don't really know that Dana White pocketed a lot of money on that fight because he basically allowed Connor to especially the dispensation to fly for Floyd Mayweather that's the only reason why he ended up fighting him he continues here says because you wouldn't let Connor actually do it himself without you taking a cut you um, you live in lies and every major fighter on your roster has complained about pay Connor, James, Masvidal, Diaz and Garno you even wake up sorry you even make up felt belt, fake belts to sell tickets instead of giving Amen and Nunes opportunity to headline. Um, remember, Dana, you were a cardio kickboxing instructor and didn't even create a UFC. Garcia and Davey um, created it. The Fertitta saved it and the fight has made it popular. You're a bold, bold bum who couldn't do an interview now without even asked about me. Pay your fighters more. So you definitely have to kind of appreciate him for kind of putting that light on things like that and allowing everybody to make a big, big amount of money on it. And then it says here... Uh, he says Jake Paul's opponent Tyron Woodley has tried to discredit his efforts made by the boxers Paul says he made sure Woodley made four times his highest salary on payday for stepping into the ring with him um, da, 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 da. and of course towards the end I think Tommy Fury was also calling him out for a big fight which would definitely be a, 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 a pay-per-view number seller especially when you consider the fame Tommy Fury has here in the UK and maybe in parts of Europe too so again fairly enjoyable fight I think maybe a little bit embarrassing for Tyron Woodley considering you know how he kind of came, kind of got cut from the UFC you know off the back of those four losses so it's what five losses so far overall um maybe he's won a couple of rounds in those five losses he lost a shadow of his former self and he kind of got essentially outboxed by a a youtuber who only started boxing a few years ago so pretty embarrassing on that side but in terms of a spectacle and everything all in between definitely enjoyable watch and hopefully we'll see more of it especially the ability to kind of have the you know the main cut or the main headlining event be Jake Paul a whole YouTuber v somebody and then you fill the undercard with actual legit boxes I think it's great it gives those other guys a big platform and it also just boosts the sport in general so it definitely was great to see that I'm not going to lie I'm not going to lie 